Here's where we are at. The epoxy and glass has hardened up nicely. Pretty smooth. Looking pretty good. Just got some trimming to do. Just trim off this bottom edge with the sander. It takes it off nicely. You don't have to cut it off with a knife or scissors or anything. Just hit it with that sander and off it comes. So I've spared you all the sanding after putting on the glass. You don't deserve that. I'm sorry for making you watch so much sanding in the last video, uh, but it's it's <laughs> been sanding and sanding and sanding. So here we are. Now that we've gotten everything glassed, we're at least at the stage where we can prime it. Finally moving forward. I'm using a high build primer. It's a uh, Total Protect by Total Boat. And honestly, there's plenty, you know, I, I, I use a lot of Total Boat products. There's plenty of good stuff out there that'll work. And I'm sure there's plenty of it that's superior to this. The problem is, is when I need a gallon of this stuff, it comes in on Amazon the next day. So it's really convenient for me more than anything else. Uh, and it, it works, it works fine. The only thing I really want to vouch for is that, that uh, Total Fair, that epoxy compound uh, for fairing the boat out. It's like Bondo on steroids. It's wonderful stuff and it sands real easy. If they were to discontinue everything in their company, that'd be the one thing I'd fight for. Let's do some priming. You really want to shake this stuff up good. Alright. That's pretty good. We'll shake up the little can too. They ship these things with these plastic rings on them so that they don't explode. I haven't figured out a trick to get them off yet. Whew, well, that shit stinks. Hell of a lot easier to mix than epoxy is though. This stuff is uh, what you call a high build primer. It's got a lot of solids in it. And that means it's gonna fill in our little gaps and nicks and scratches and whatever else pretty well. So I'm not gonna thin this first coat, I don't think, to let its maximum building capability work for us. That's my plan anyway. Is it smart? I don't know. And we're gonna let this stuff chooch for about 10 minutes. All right, it's done chooching. You don't know what chooching means? You can't look it up. I don't, I don't think it's in the dictionary, but uh, that's a Northeast Yankee thing. You let something rest in a pot, it's chooching. You gotta let it chooch. Generally, you wanna use a rolling pan, but I don't have time for all that today. I'm just gonna smear this around. I'm using a foam roller. I think it's a quarter inch foam roller. Maybe a 3 16 foam roller. This primer comes in two different colors, gray and white. And uh, I'm using the white because the color that's going on over it is a light color. The darker colors, uh, you wanna use the gray. It's like a waterfall of mayonnaise. All right, this part I'm doing in the roller pan because I don't wanna just dump paint down the sides of this boat. For the bottom, it's fine not to use it. You know, I love this primer and I hate this primer for the exact same reasons. It lets you see where all your blemishes are. I'll come back in tomorrow, we'll give it a sanding, a light sanding, just to knock down any ridges, and then we'll roll with another coat of primer. The next coat of primer, we're gonna thin down a bit so it kind of flows into pinholes and stuff like that. So we've got plenty of layers on the boat and it looks like it's a little bit wonky, but that's all right. I'm not about to let perfect get in the way of good enough and let's flip this sucker over and get to work on the interior. So we give it the old heave ho here and once we get it off the ground, we realize there's still a screw from the strong back into the uh, bow of the boat there. So we got to put it back down and uh, this isn't anything that we can't fix with a Sawzall. Having been obsessed with the construction of small boats for the last year, I've always liked the little tradition where you invite over a whole bunch of your friends for a boat flipping party. You feed them some barbecue, uh, you know, maybe there's a couple of adult beverages around and you get everybody's help. 
even though this hull only weighs about 250 pounds right now as it sits, uh, it's still a bit much for me and a pal to flip over. As you can see, we got to pull the strong back out. We're going to set those jacks underneath it, and uh, hopefully she sits down nice. It's funny, a couple of the guys were surprised by the lightweight of the shell of this boat and the rigidity of it, given the fact that it's just made out of some thin sheets of plywood and framing lumber. This is an important milestone for me in this boat, and it really makes me want to work on it with more intensity. It's a very motivating moment. All right, now that we have the boat flipped over, we have got a lot of work to do on the inside of it before we can get that ready for painting. We've got all sorts of screws poking out and weird chunks of wood and drips of epoxy all over the place and it needs to get trimmed up and evened up. So that's what we're gonna do. I'm gonna start by cutting off the tips of all these screws and any screws that missed. I don't need to cut anything off from here forward because uh, all this is gonna be filled with foam. No sense in wasting the time, right? All right, next thing I'm gonna plane down the top of this uh, transom, make it flat with the rest of the boat, and then we're gonna add some reinforcement to the transom. The reason why we're gonna add some reinforcement to the transom is because the original motor that I was going with, which is that very good Yamaha 15 horsepower, uh, it's a tiller control, and in the specifications on the plans, Mr. Spiras said that it could be a 15 inch, 15 horsepower max tiller, or a 20 inch, 30 horsepower max remote. But it's a 20 inch transom, so I didn't see how a 15 inch outboard would work well with a 20 inch transom. So I scrapped that idea and decided to go with a completely different motor altogether. It's got a 20 inch shaft and it's third, uh, 25 horsepower. And it's right over... Don't look at that! Don't look at that, we're doing a whole different video on that. Concentrate on this, let's concentrate on this thing. Woo! Go! Oh. That'll do. Now guess what? Sanding. That's right, more sanding. The cool thing is there's so much to do on this boat that I can just wait for that to dry and I have 27 other projects that can fill my time. So I measured, marked, and cut off these rub rails here. And as you can see, we've added the relief cuts to the back there. They call them curves, so that they'll make the bend up here at the bow of the boat. And you simply set the depth on your skill saw. And here we sanded the hole where the rub rails are gonna go so that the glue will stick. and we have installed the rub rails. Next thing we're gonna do is plane those suckers down, try to get this wonky boat looking a little more even.
Peng is going to need a trailer, so we're cannibalizing our kayak trailer that we've used on previous adventures. I gave my son Carson a couple of wrenches, and boy, he really went to town tearing this thing down so we can go ahead and repurpose it. 